in part one, we talked about accidental changes, those changes that are contingent in a, an object or a substance or a person or an animal or plant and so on. In part two, we're going to look at a different kind of change. So Aristotle also talks about substantial change. And some changes that we might call comings to be occur without qualification. And these are the comings to be of individual substances, things that come into existence that weren't in existence in the past. For example, you were not in, the, in existence in the distant past, but now you are, and you are a substance you came to be. And so the tree that exists, the horse, the statue, these things, the substances come to be, come into existence without any qualification. And we might say they come to be, period, right? These are substantial changes, not accidental changes. And this is in contrast, of course, the accidental changes might be something like someone becoming tall or something becoming brown or beautiful, right? Those are qualities that come to exist in a substance that's already there. But we want to talk about substantial change. And so in the physics, we see that everything comes to be from some underlying thing. That is a principle. Things don't pop into existence. We, Aristotle is certainly following the logic of Parmenides and on that, things don't come into being from nothing. And so in order for any change to occur, there has to be some underlying subject that provides the substance for the change. And if a substance such as a horse or a tree or a statue comes to be, it has to be complex. It has to come to be from something. So Aristotle says, we just have this quotation here. I think it's so important that we, we can quote him on this. For as the bronze is to the statue, the wood to the bed, or the matter in the formless before receiving form, to anything which has form, so is the underlying nature to substance. That is the this or existence. And so Aristotle talks about if something comes to exist, like a statue, the bronze had to exist first. If a bed comes into existence, and we're talking about a bed made out of wood, of course, the wood had to exist first. And so that also has to be true of a substantial chain. There, change. There has to be some existent before it comes into existence before a horse or a statue or a person comes into existence. But what is it? What is that underlying stuff? So and a candidate now is we're pursuing this goal of identifying, getting a better grip on what primary usia is, primary substance. Aristotle says, well, this candidate is, is prime matter. Maybe that's it. And all change requires some kind of underlying subject, and you have to have a principle of antithesis, just like we had the unmusical man becoming a musical man. There has to be some kind of principle of antithesis in order for a change to be intelligible. And of course, Aristotle thought that all nature was intelligible. And so the absence of form serves as an opposite for the form. So when Aristotle says that phrase, the matter and the formless, before receiving form to anything which has form, that is an underlying subject for something such as bronze coming into being or wood coming into being. So this is getting a little complex, so stick with it. And we are going to expand and clarify this when we get to the metaphysics and we won't really get to the end until we have uh, part five of the video for the metaphysics, but we're laying some important groundwork here. So Aristotle thought of this kind of 
possibility. Maybe matter described as a, as a potentiality could be the primary substance. Here, so for the first time, he's not talking about the four elements of earth, air, fire, and water. We're talking about prime matter. This is something much more like Anaximander's apiron, the unbounded, the unqualified stuff out of which other things come into existence. And so we have formless matter. It doesn't even have the form of being one of the elements. So that is potentiality that does not itself come into being or pass out of being. It's just always there, that stuff. And this is what we might call prime matter. It's a formless substance. And it has the potential to become any physical substance because it has the potential to become water or fire or earth or air. And those are the things that make up everything else that exists. And so we have prime matter. That's a possibility of what it is that is the primary substance. So we have primary substance. Now we're using the word usii um, instead of the word for matter. And what is that? So we have our candidate, prime matter. This is formless underlying stuff of individual substances. That, now, it could be the elements, but it looks like as we just talked through, Aristotle also postulates this is theoretical stuff, prime matter. It's theoretical because you can never observe it. You can't reach out and get a handful of gunk that is the prime matter because whatever you can reach out and get is already one of the four elements at the least, and quite likely something else composed of those elements. So it's theoretical. So Aristotle is, is postulating the existence of this stuff. Now, another candidate for being the primary usii substance are the individual substances, which are the subjects of changes. This is what we identified in the categories as the primary UCI, so a particular horse, a particular person like Callius, Aristotle's friend, and or we have another possibility. Now this one we won't explore in great detail, but the contraries which the individual substances can take, here we're talking about properties, right? The non-musical and the musical. We're talking about properties that things have. Maybe it's the properties themselves that are the primary UCI. Now that, again, we're not going to push. So primary UCI, what, what is it? Well, we have to focus on actuality and not mere potentiality. It has to exist. And it has to be something that exists in actuality. Otherwise, if it's a potentiality, we haven't gotten there. There must be something else. So whatever the primary substance, primary UCI is, it has to be something that is in actuality. And certainly natural substances fit the bill. They are in actuality. So individual plants and animals, simple bodies, which for Aristotle would be one of the four basic elements, these could be the primary UCI. And in the physics, it seems like he says, this is the primary UCI. Now, we're primarily going to focus, as he does in the, as he develops his metaphysics, on the first option, the biological entities. Those are the best examples of substances for Aristotle. So these things, the biological entities, have a principle of motion and of stationariness. Now, the elements do as well, right? Uh, fire has an, a tendency to go up. Earth has a tendency to go down. So they have that principle, right? Water above the earth, but below the air, right? So you have that hierarchy within the elements and they have a tendency to go to their proper place. So they, in, in a sense, have a principle of motion as well, but plants and animals, these are the kinds of things that are best examples of things with principles of motion from within them. Now, the products of art, the things that we make for purposes of to use in various ways, like furniture or clothing, these don't have a principle of motion from within them. So these things, we could kind of call them substances, but artifacts are only simulacra of substances. They aren't the real thing. They're ersatz substances. We can 
talk as if they are substances, but they're really not. Okay, take a different approach to this. Are we talking about form or matter? For Aristotle, the nature of a substance on the one hand is the immediate constituent of the substance without arrangement. So the immediate constituent of a bed, if we're gonna talk about a, a simulacra of a substance, an artifact, is the wood. And as Antiphon said, if a bed were planted, would you expect a bed to grow or a tree? No, it's a, a tree, obviously, if it were to grow. And so wood, that's what it is. For bronze, we identify water. Uh, that would be the main element for the Greeks in bronze. For bones, the main element would be earth. So you're getting at that immediate uh, substance, and that leads us to thinking that the four elements, or maybe one primary one, the theoretical primary usii stuff, goo, the prime matter, that is, would be eternal and the underlying substances for everything that comes to be and passes away. So there's an argument for saying that it's matter. Matter is the primary usi. But there's a problem. The way we've described these things, they are in mere potentiality compared to what we're talking about when we're talking about our best examples of substances that exist. The elements are in potentiality of becoming wood or bronze or, or bones. So Aristotle says it is better to think of the primary UCI as the form, that nature is the shape when we're talking about an artifact, and secondarily the shape or form when we're talking about a biological entity, and that which is specified in the definition of the thing. So we, I, we have a definition of a horse and what we're doing is we're getting at the nature of the form of the horse. When we define a horse, it's not the matter that is first and foremost. We talk about its shape, sure, four legs and so on, its height and, and so on. But we also talk about its form. What does it do? It, it runs, it can carry things, those kinds of things. And the wood is only a bed potentially and not in actuality. What the wood lacks then is a form. It's the form of the bed. That's the nature of the bed. So when we wanna get at the nature of the bed, yeah, we could talk about wood, just like we could talk about the physical stuff that makes up a horse. But what we, when we really wanna get at an understanding of what a bed is, we have to talk about the form. It's the form that is ultimately the nature of things. So, this is a reason for Aristotle to, to lean towards form, but the discussion goes on. Okay, so it's the form of the horse, which is a soul, and Aristotle thinks that animals have souls, even plants have souls, and that's what accounts for the actual movement of the horse. It's the form of the horse, not the matter alone. Right? You could take the same matter and, and have a cow, and the cow's not going to be very good at running like the horse is. That part of the form of the horse is to run, right? That's the nature of the horse. So if the matter of bone and flesh did not yet have form, it wouldn't have a principle of motion like a horse does, and thus it would lack its nature. It wouldn't have it. Again, we're pushing towards the answer being form. Now, he does take a pause here and consider something that we, again, will get to in the mature work, the metaphysics, especially part five, uh, in terms of our videos. So maybe it's the combination of matter and form. Maybe that's the primary usii, since the two are separable in thought and language only. We can kind of think through and abstract the form existing and the matter existing separately. But when you're actually thinking, when you actually have a horse, you can't separate the form from the matter. It's, if, you try, if you do, it's no longer a horse. We're not talking about a horse anymore. You might have a corpse of a horse, but it's not a horse. It would just be the matter. You don't actually have the form anymore. Uh, so maybe this combination, and that is certainly something that we, he explores later. And to identify the principle of nature, we need to know 
why a thing is what it is. And you get at that, the answer to that is always in the form. What makes a horse a horse? You have to identify the form of the horse. And so he says fairly conclusively here that the form indeed is nature rather than the matter. For a thing is more properly said to be what it is when it exists in actuality, when it has its form, than it, when it exists potentially, when the, when the matter exists uh, that could only potentially be a cow or a horse or a person, we're not getting at the nature of things. So the primary UCI, that primary substance is not matter. It's not prime matter. It's not the elements. It is a form. Now, the, the trick is that we go on to talk about the form of a particular horse in greater detail uh, with some new information, some new ideas, rather, when we are looking at the mature version of Aristotle's metaphysics in his book called The Metaphysics. And so that's what should be studied next.